so cool. That's hot. It's definitely steamy. Oh my, welcome to my hot tub. Oh, boiled Canadian. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> ah, success. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Building This Wood-Fired Hot Tub. I got my buddy Dennis here, and uh, we're burning the midnight oil. It's, it's, it's getting dark outside, but when you have somebody that's gonna give you a hand, you work on their schedule. That's right, Dennis? No, that's pretty right. much. You got off, you worked all day. All day. And now you're coming here to help me. That's, that's very noble. Well, that's what friends do. That's right. See that? And, and you, know, you don't wanna punch a gift horse in the mouth, right? Well, that, that's a saying, I think. I, I would never punch a gift horse in the mouth. Have you seen the size of gift horses? Oh. Is that a thing? That's a, that's a type of horse? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> gift horse. We'll have to look that up. Uh, maybe it's a type of horse. Well, guys, I'm going to bring you up to speed a little bit. So the last time we were building this hot tub, we went to the uh, metal fabrication shop and uh, we bent up the stainless steel panels to give us the rough shape of the tub. And we did some TIG welding to kind of stick it all together. And uh, we milled out a log in order to get our uh, cladding for the tub, but we still have lots left to do. So the plan today, this evening, it's morning for you guys, but we're going to, uh, we're going to be stitching the rest of this uh, hot tub together. So we got to weld on every single seam. There's not a whole lot of seams, but it requires a special skill. This is tungsten welding, this is TIG? TIG, TIG welding. TIG, Ta TIG. T Tungsten inert gas. Why didn't I? That was just a brain fart. It was on your. Yeah, yeah I could see it. I could see the tungsten inert gas, and we're TIG welding stainless steel metal. Right. So GTAW gas tungsten gas TIG get 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 to get that <laughs> gas and turn out. Uh, uh, yeah. That, yeah. That. Gas tungsten a arc welding. Arc welding. Yeah. So that's the the welding with no sparks. So there's, that's there's, right. That's kind of cool. There's actually a, like a difference between, you know, a, a, a traditional wire feed welder. It's, it seems like I could equate that to the, you know, the sparky type welding. This one is kind of like surgical welding if I'm going to, you know, equate it to anything. This is the, the technical aspect of welding. And Dennis knows what he's doing. So I'm going to sit back, kind of watch, perhaps learn something. And uh, I'll document the whole thing because it'll be cool. Don't wait. Don't forget that you're going to be doing some of it. All right. So. I, I got to do the pipes. I want to do the pipes on the heat exchanger because, uh, well, that just seems like I want to do that. So is your oh. method to the madness of what you're doing next? Should you just like button up the entire seams? Like we've tacked it all at this point. So what are you doing now? Yeah. So we've tacked it all together. We made sure that everything is square and, uh, and flush and it's not wobbly. <clears throat> so we've, we've Tacked it all together in spots, so now we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to seam weld it all up, make sure that there's good uh, good fusion in there. Weld everything up, make sure it's leak tight. Um, what would be worse than having a hot tub with leaky water? Look at that weld, I, I wanna touch it. it. It just looks so pretty, but it's very, 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 very hot. So we've got two welds completed, two seams completed, right along. Look at that, look at how nice that is, it's like perfect. It's so pretty. I wanna yeah, touch don't it, I, I wanna touch it, I wanna touch it. I know. I yeah. won't touch it, not gonna touch it. I ain't gonna shot that one. That's a nice one. Let's go right on its face. Let's face on its face! Go, go, yeah, this way and then, and then uh, just like, for the love of peace. Okay. Let it solidify before you keep going. Yeah. It, it reduces the blowouts. So I, I took some video of the actual welding process. I got the camera behind the lens. What exactly, what was I looking at? I could see like, 
a little, I could see the, the bright center and then the tip, and then there was a kind of like a little halo up the side. What is exactly is going on? Well, exactly is going on is that I'm producing the arc through the, <clears throat> the tungsten. So the tungsten, the power comes down through the tungsten, it comes down to that little narrow point, and then it flares out, and that's what's producing the arc. So that arc jumps between the metal and the tungsten, and then that's what gives you that, uh, that hot area. And then you can start adding your filler wire in as after you get a molten red metal. Okay, so that's why you were kind of like you were dabbing the you were dabbing the rod into was, the arc, melting I, it. I was dabbing the rod just in front of the arc, just on the edge of the molten pool, and then the molten pool actually pulls the filler rod into it, and then it solidifies into the metal. That's very cool. There we go. Lava? It's gotta be lava. It's lava. It's McCafe. Well, no, it's not McCafe. It's McCafe cups, because we don't have any other cups here. So, oh, okay, good. So it's, it's, I don't know what kind of coffee. It's fancy coffee. He likes really, you like really hot, weird coffee, but nothing like, in it. I like really bold and dark. Bold and dark. So I've got um, candy and cream. I kind of like forest mud in a cup. Forest mud in a cup. Sure, bold and dark. Nice, nice. <laughs> so to bring you guys up to speed now, Dennis has come by in the morning and he's starting to weld all the seams up and I'm kind of watching and learning and I'm picking up some tips here and there. I haven't yet tried it. So my plan after my, you know, cups of coffee to prevent the shakes or to add shakes, maybe shaking is good. That depends. The rod, if you shake the rod, it might be good, right? Cause you're putting well, it in. You're going uphill. Absolutely. Uphill, shaking the rod, good. Downhill, shaking the rod, bad. I mm -hmm. guess that. You don't melt down hand. Don't hand, don't well down hand, only uphill, only uphill? Yeah. Okay, I've been listening and pay attention a little too closely, might I add you, because last time I had sandy eyes at night. And <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys have ever been around welding. I might have got arc flashed a couple times and um, trying to cover to film and, and you know, use your hiding behind your mask and whatnot, but I did have sandy eyes that one night, so I, I just be careful, don't watch it. You guys are safe at home because the camera doesn't actually capture the hurdy bits of the of the light. Well, you have to wear safety glasses. Safety glasses? Yeah. That'll stop the intense burning. Or the intense burning? The, yeah. the sandy eyes. The Sandman come and made my eyes scratchy at nighttime. I wonder if that's where they get the name for the song, Sandman. I don't, well, usually when children are tired, they rub their eyes because they're scratchy. Or something is that the thing's gonna explode on us? It's tinging and tonguing because it's cooling down. It's just it got hot, so everything expands a little yeah. bit as it cools. It just so it's she's tinging. That's a good thing. So we're gonna enjoy our coffee and we're gonna go back and I'm going to attempt my first ever TIG weld. These are tiny. You guys got little hands. That's They're why very I take talented one. little. Hands. Look at the size of the torch. Okay, that's it's not the nozzle of the torch. But right, that's it's very it's it's very. I it's feel like a surgeon. Well, it's not the size of the tools, it's not the size of your hands, it's what you do with them. That's right. I'm not saying, like, I think these are, yes. You want to even go there. You want to have good dexterity. That's right. You want to be able to feel what's going on. That's why I use such small gloves. All right, I'm going to use, I'm using your hood because I don't trust mine. I uh, got the sandy eyes. We, 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 we talked about that. <laughs> so, just to explain a little bit, there's a foot pedal, like a sewing machine. Like a sewing machine. So you put the foot pedal and that releases the argon? It releases the energy. The energy. Because all it turns on the argon. Turns on the argon and allows the tip to be energized? Yes. Okay, and then In a nutshell. When, when you get the tip close to it, the arc starts? So that's how it goes. So when, you, when you're going to start, you're going to touch it. Oh, you're going to touch it. And then you're just going to lift it up. Okay. And when you lift it up, that's when you push the foot pedal down. Okay. And you want to hover that tip just above the material. All right. Right? The higher you come up, the wider that arc's gonna be. Uh -huh. So your arc is gonna flare out. 
Right. So you want to keep it nice and tight, but you don't want to touch the material. Once you touch the material, then we have to take that tip out, sharpen it, put it back in. How many times are we going to take the tip out? Hopefully, none. Ho none. Hopefully none. All you're going to do is you're just going to lift it up. You touch it and then lift it up? Well, no, you don't touch it. You just come close and then it starts. The, well, the magic when, starts. When you put your foot pedal on. Okay. That's, that's your trigger. So you touch it and then lift it up and then push the foot pedal. Yeah. The only reason why is I touch it is just to give myself an air, an air, air space. Oh, uh, okay. Right. So just give your so, kind of... So by, because I've been doing it for so long, I can just hold it right there, turn on the arc. So you're kind of touching it to judge how far you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you... That. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Let's... <laughs> right. So you don't want it to... All you have to do is... Don't even need the filler rod because this is such a nice tight fit. Yeah. All you're going to do is just going to melt the two seams together. You're just going to wave it back and forth and you're going to watch it melt. And I don't, you don't need a filler rod. No. Really? Yeah. This is, this is all just fusion welded. This is really? Yeah. Well then put the rod down. Put the rod down and just take your time. Okay. So the more you put your foot pedal down, the hotter it's going to get. Oh. So you want to keep this at the same height. So it's just exactly like a sewing machine. Exactly like your car. But I prefer a sewing machine. Well, I guess okay. if it's your car, if you press the pedal down, you're gonna go faster. I don't sew. I don't sew and I can't knit. Well, I remember as a, as you know, high school sewing, and then you, what you would do is you would kind of like, you would just right to the floor. And it I'd would go be, faster. Yeah, or you'd jam all the thread right. all over. Right, you wanna watch the material melt. Okay. And as it's melting, you just wanna keep it going. Keep right. it puddling. So if I break this, you can fix it? Oh yeah. Okay, all right. No problem. How am I holding this thing? Like Whatever's comfortable for you so like that you can see. Nothing's you... comfortable. This thing's a wiggly worm. All right. I, I feel like that. And I'm holding, hold, and if I go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and slowly, right? You're nice. just going to go back and forth. Okay. Nice and slow. All, All right. the way around. So, and then you're like half speed on the pedal. Uh, yeah. You're just going to start the arc. Okay. And then give it a little bit more power until the metal starts melting. So a little more power, more power, there you go. Oh, I touched it. It's stuck. Yes, you did. I Break feel like off. Carry on. It's not, it's not broken? Okay. That's all right. Double. A little more paddle. One more. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> right, so now if you can't see where you're going, yeah, you come go back over that here. That way and go backwards. Yeah. I don't know, that looks pretty good. <laughs> what would you like? That was cool. I like how there's no spark shooting in my head. I didn't feel like I was going to catch fire at any point. Hey, I think you did, uh, you did pretty well. Hey guys, I want to introduce you to one of my newest sponsors, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that allows people to explore their creative side and learn new skills. Maybe you have a specific skill you're trying to learn. Well, Skillshare is a great place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing and more, you can find a class that will match your goal and interest. You're interested in making a career pivot or perhaps up-leveling your skills in your current role? Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers and entrepreneurs. What's also great about Skillshare is it's ad-free, so you can stay in the zone when you're learning new skills. There's new premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. Skillshare offers its entire catalog with subtitles in French, Spanish, Portuguese, and German. The reason why I was most interested in joining Skillshare is because I love learning new things. I love looking at other people's point of view when learning new things. So I've been a member for about a month now and I've done a couple of courses and I've watched a lot of videos. And the last month was, uh, I believe, learning skills in architectural photography. And I kind of did that and you kind of learn stuff that you kind of forgot. 
you forgot you knew. So it's kind of like a refresher course, which was really cool. And uh, now I'm uh, now I pivoted to another course, and uh, actually you can pull it up on your phone even, which is really neat. And uh, it's making great YouTube thumbnails by Polymatter. He gets into the details of what works in a thumbnail and composition and style wise. So that's been really useful. You know, it could be useful for you in your social media or your Instagram posts or anything like that. The first 1000 people to use my link or my code modern self reliance, will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. What are you guys waiting for? Let's start learning and exploring together. Join Skillshare today. All right, so we got our little stiffener bar. This is a square piece of stainless steel tubing and that's going to go from side to side on the tub to prevent it from splaying out once it's full of water. Rub your pipe. Just, just rub my pipe. Yeah, just rub my pipe. I mean, it's a good day when you have to rub your pipe. With acetone. Well, I mean. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, right? You wanna have a good clean pipe. That's right. It's always good to reuse right. something, right? Like when something like sit in your yard for so long, you're like, I got a use for that. And that was about two years ago. That's, I said, I've got a use for that. That's right. And I knew that a friend of mine would want to make a stainless steel hot tub. There you go. I think. Cool. We'll go with that. So anyways, you always want to make sure that your material is clean because you don't want to burn off any uh, chlorinated substance because that would cause phosgene gas. Phosgene gas. And that makes you sick. I see. So you just want to make sure it's nice and clean. What about the acetone used to clean it? Acetone evaporates clean. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't leave any residue. I don't know. It's going right in my nose right now. Well, that's because it's fresh. Okay. I mean, you could smell this rag, and but we'll just put that in the fire and burn that later. Okay. talk a little bit about heat exchange tubes. Now we have seven heat exchange tubes. These tubes are about two inches in diameter. They go throughout the box and then the fire is going to be in this bottom half of the box and it's going to permeate up through that exchanging the heat to the water efficiently as it possibly can. Normally these snorkel type stoves are always made out of aluminum and the reason why is because they ship them all over the world and they want to make them light for shipping. Not to mention aluminum has a 15 times better heat dissipation than stainless steel. Although if you make it out of aluminum you have a better chance of corrosion over time. And longevity wise, if you're gonna build it once and have it for life, you build it out of stainless steel. Now, what we did in order to compensate for our heat loss exchange is we added more tubes. And this thing should, this is going to outlast nearly all of us. This thing is built to last forever. So this is, this is our design. We're gonna see how well it works. And uh, what the great thing about doing your own thing and manufacturing your own equipment is that if it doesn't work, we can always rejig it. This is again, a kind of a prototype, but I think it's gonna work. I was just informed they're not two inch tubes, they're three inch tubes. So three inches tubes, we have seven of them. That's a lot of surface area for heat exchange. Sorry, buddy, I underestimated the size of your tube. <laughs> Wow. It's three inch, it's not two inch. I'm sorry, That's buddy. Right. That's right, I have a three inch tube. <laughs> oh, they might only be three inch tube, but there are seven of them. So what we had to do there is we had to actually make the chimney a hole a little bigger. The original uh, design, well, we had a four inch hole, I believe, and that simply was not going to be big enough. So we modified it slightly. We used the jigsaw at the start. And then we switch to a grinder because as it turns out, the stainless steel is uh, not the easiest stuff to cut. You knew that, right, Dennis? I did know that. You were, he was optimistic. He was like, I don't know if that jigsaw blade's going to cut it. And it turns out it didn't. So well, you know it, it made it halfway. Yeah, it made it halfway. And, and uh, yeah, I was quite, uh, quite surprised. It was that. actually, it was quite impressive that it did make it halfway. Yeah. I got uh, probably a little overzealous with the trigger and it went a little fast and I saw the blade turn like a molten steel. 
yeah. And that's when you know it's dead. So anyways, the uh, grinder wheel seemed to, the cutoff wheel on the grinder seemed to do a nice job of that. And uh, it doesn't have to be exactly pretty because it's the inside of the pipe and it's gonna get covered in cruciate and all sorts of other junk. So he's gonna surface weld that pipe to the chimney box, the fire box, and that's gonna be our, uh, our chimney. So anyways. After that's done, you can actually fill that up. That's true. So once that is, uh, once we've got it all welded up, what we're gonna do is a kind of a leak test. We're gonna actually fill the firebox full of water and if anything leaks out, we know water would leak in exactly. and put the fire out. So then we can patch it. But I don't anticipate any leaks because Dennis is an expert welder. I, I try. Okay, all right. So but we're gonna, we're gonna double check it. And uh, if we need to, we could patch it at this stage of the game because it would really suck to have everything full of water and then water infiltrating your wood stove. It would put the fire in. Water and fire don't mix. It's not a smoker. That's right, it's not. Wait, oh, was that a, is that a dig? Hey, it wasn't me with the brisket anyway. Think this is gonna work, Bean? Think this is gonna work? Hey, you think it's gonna work? Yeah. But it's gonna work, right? Doing a little bit of straightening. We want to be where? Right about there? Yeah. Good. She's good. good. So what we're doing is we're installing these braces along the edge and it's holding our stainless out far enough so uh, it gives us more rigidity. On the ends it's not so important. It's on the long walls that we got a little bit more support so it doesn't blow out when it's full of water. This end piece is more acting like a spacer. So when we get our cedar in there, it actually gives us point to point. We're gonna actually flex the cedar in to the angles in order to hold it. So do you need another push? I thought that was artistic design. That's right, we, we planned that. We planned the little arc at the sides. Okay, bottom? Uh, about a third up. Third, third up. Okay, go. My shoe's on fire! <laughs> what? It's glowing. Oh. That smells like burnt rubber. That's great. That's good. Is that good? Yep. Good, good. See, is it coming along quite well? These are our stiffening bars. You can see them. They go all the way from one side to the other. And all the way around. You can see our corner brackets and our corner bracing. This is going to hold our corners in. Those are just added security to make sure they don't pop out. So the verdict is in. The firebox on the hot tub itself has been wet tested and it doesn't leak at all. I was somewhat skeptical of my own personal weld. It was gonna leak, but it turns out none of the welds leak. It's a perfect watertight box because we filled it right to the top and uh, there was no water coming out so that means it's going to keep water out once it's got fire inside which is pretty cool i guess that's beginner's luck right all right just bringing you guys up to speed a little bit uh so i had a little bit of time so i figured i would start making my stock for my benches that are going to go in my hot tub so i i milled out the cedar a little while ago i ended up uh stacking it kind of let it dry a little bit and then I took all my pieces and I cut them to length because I want to do the outside of the hot tub with uh, vertical pieces from from end to end kind of all the way across and that would give me a little bit more stability I wouldn't want to go horizontal because then I might have a little bit of bowing in it but uh, vertical I think will actually work better and then what I did was I actually took some more pieces and I cut them for the bench seat that's going to be inside and that's gonna allow me to sit up off of the bottom because I don't wanna just be sitting on stainless steel. I kinda wanna add a Rondax style chair inside. And it, it, is, it is Eastern white cedar, so it is going to have that aromatic kind of feel to it. 
and uh, it's really, you know, water stable because it is cedar, so it, it can get wet and dry out and wet and dry out hundreds of times before it, even a question of whether or not it's going to, to rot. And it, it's a sustainable product because we did, we did harvest it from a fallen tree. It was otherwise just going to sit there and rot. So it's pretty much going to do the same thing anyway, sitting in a hot tub, just kind of living life in hot water as opposed to cold. So uh, anyways, we got it all pretty much milled up. I've got to bring it to my buddy's house. So there's my wood stock. I have a lot of pieces I've got to plane and join. But uh, I think if you were to buy that at the store, you'd be taking out a second mortgage on your house because uh, that's a lot of cedar. Probably next is, is to run it through a, a thickness uh, planer in order to give me uniform thickness before I install it in the tub. Just in here, borrow my buddy's shop. He's got the uh, joiner and the planer. Those tools I don't own. I'm not a fine woodworking type of guy. My buddy Dwayne is. So what we ended up doing was taking all of the rough sawn cedar and running it through the planer first to give us a really smooth finish on one side of the exterior cladding. And then we ran the deck boards through to give us good on both sides because that's where we're gonna be sitting and that's where you can see most of it. And then we ran the boards through the joiner, which gives us a clean edge on both sides for joining the wood together. So it'll be a really tight fit when everything is set done. So at this stage of the game, we're working on our feet because we want this thing to sit up off of the ground, off of the mud, out of the dirt, give it a little bit of style. So what we have is these uh, square tubes. Square tubes, it's a pretty thick wall. What kind of square tube is this? Uh, it's two inch by two inch by one eighth wall. Thick enough for what we gotta do and it's uh, gonna keep the weight down. But uh, yeah, so that's the plan. So put four little feet all along the side here and then it'll give us something to sit on. We're gonna cut these guys off because these are just, uh, we just cut them long so that we can actually see them. Uh, so we're just gonna cut them off and then that'll give us a nice reveal. It'll kind of look like the tub is floating, right? Right, a floating hot tub. A floating hot tub. It'll also give you a support there so that you can actually, you know, level it up. That's right. So, right, you don't want it to like, if you, got, if you had no feet and you put this on the ground, it might just suction itself to the ground and you never get it up. Well, exactly. I mean, without any feet, it'd be kind of like stubby, stumpy? Yeah, it's stumpy. We want to give it a little bit of, a little bit of style. It's like, it's like the ladies. You know the ladies wear the big old shoes? The, what are they, stilettos? Stilettos. They wear the stiletto shoes because they want to give a little bit of style. We're going to give this tub a little bit of stiletto. Well, I have to resharpen my tungsten. Okay, so you got to explain to people what the tungsten is. Oh, okay, so tungsten, this is 2% uh, thoriated. So tungsten actually, this is what I actually weld with. So this actually uh, creates the spark, or not the spark, but the electric current. And then I have my arc that comes off the very point of this. I don't know how well you can zoom in. Yeah, well right. we, we got some other footage of it. I can see it. Oh, okay, so it. you saw what I was doing. So what I want to do is the direction of travel that I'm doing on this is I'm making all the little very fine lines on the tungsten nice and straight all the way to the point. You don't want to have them circular because what happens with the electric current wraps around that circular, it gives you, uh, creates an uneven arc. So you want to have them nice and straight so the arc comes down the rod to the point and comes out. So very precision stuff. So we got our work sharp here. This is, uh, I don't know if this is exactly designed for this sort of application, but hey, it seems to it be works. working really well, right? It works really well. You're getting um, a really, you could probably shank somebody with that. Uh, I could. Okay. Tungsten is very, very, very hard metal, right? It is, but it's also very brittle. So oh, is it brittle? Yeah. So oh, okay. if you drop it, chances are you might crack so it. So instead, you should use depleted uranium. Well, you used whatever is designed for the purpose. Okay, good. Right. So this is designed for what we're doing. Uh, there's very many different types of uh, TIG rod or GTAW rod. Uh, GTAW is gas tungsten arc welding. Sounds like you've been in the comments. Well, I did hear one fella, he was like, well, that's not TIG, you know, TIG is the improper term. So this is actually GTAW. Yeah, what you gotta do is not feed the trolls, right? Well, I'm not feeding anybody, okay. um, <laughs> but I am giving the proper terminology. Right on. All right, so let's get to work.
So Kevin, I noticed that we had to do a little bit of adjustment on the... That's right. Just cut it down a little bit. Yeah. My old boss once told me, even mountain goats can stumble. Okay. It happens. Well, so we can explain what, what, what occurred. So originally with the original design, this was going to get folded down and there's going to be a larger flange on, on this thing for the top lid to sit on, but instead we didn't. <laughs> so we cut it off while well, the flat bar here to straighten this guy out. And then we're going to make a, like a little top for it. that's going to have bent side. So it's going to ride along the edges to open and close the damper. That's what's going to be here. Right? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Play this little tune. Oh, listen close. Ah, oh, dig it. That? That's a music of metal. That's right. Nice. So we welded little brackets on the bottom of the tub. You can see there's uh, one, two, three, four, and that's going to help. Well, it's going to prevent the stove from popping out like a cork when it's sitting underwater. tubes in there, I use it for a handle. First time, eh? Look at that. I love when a plan comes together. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So those little stainless steel nuts there will hold it from wiggling and pop it out. That would suck, eh? If you had like a firebox fly out of the water like a cork. Oh my gosh. You would think that it's like your biggest bottle of champagne ever in the world. But it'd be on fire. Kind of like a missile. Yeah, it would be like a missile. Anyway, so there. The firebox is in place, as you can see. It's going to be fully submerged. That's cool. Right, you have even, even distance all the way around. Yeah. Good for the water transfer. Perfect. Well, I think uh, it took us a few days here and there. Does your wife even know your name anymore? Well, as long as I bring home some maple syrup one day, she's okay <laughs> with it. Well, you got, you're welcome. You got, uh, you got pretty much uh, the key to the, the key to the hot tub city. You can come and uh, bring the wife and uh, light up the fire and. That's fantastic. Down in the bush. Bathe in some pond water. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna sit in here in the hot tub, and I'll do some ice fishing in the pond. That's that's a that's a thing. Right. That's gotta be a thing. That'd be kind of cool. Right, it's definitely Canadian. That's true. All right, so. We're at the stage now where we got to do the wood portion of this build. So as you can see, I've kind of got the, uh, the couple of wood pieces kind of test fitted in there. You can see the joint on the, you can't even see the joint on the wood. It's like, look at, disappears. Just like, that's how, that's how good it's going to be all the way along. We're going to do all the way around and the deck portion of that. How are you at woodworking? Uh, you know what? I'm going to learn from you. There you go. All right. Well, you're going to have to watch that. We're going to do that in the daylight. And uh, yeah, we're going to revisit that probably tomorrow at some point. Well, Dennis, thanks a bunch for giving no me a hand. No problem. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see you later. All right. Well, we've come to the part of the build where we need some insulation. So I've got some of this stuff laying around. This is the foil back bubble wrap insulation type material. I have this left over from a roofing job I did. This actually went underneath a steel roof as a, uh, a radiant barrier to reflect the heat. So I think it's an ideal candidate to keep the heat in the water and uh, keep it warmer longer. So the plan is to wrap the entire surface of the tub the best I can with this bubble wrap. And I'm not sure if I want white side in or silver side in. So I think I'm gonna go silver side in to reflect the heat back into the tub. Um, that's my plan, I don't know. Probably consult the engineers over at NASA to determine whether or not it's, uh, it's supposed to have white side in or whites or silver side, silver side in. I'm just gonna go silver side in. But yeah, that's my, that's my plan with this stuff. With insulation, all you have to do really worry about is airspace. So we're gonna create two airspaces. One's with the bubble wrap and the other thing with the cedar cladding. That's gonna also help us retain heat.
Well guys, you wouldn't believe on how fiddly this was. So I ran into a problem with my wood being not exactly the same width everything. So I had to really focus on measuring and ensuring my holes are in the right spot in order to attach it. And then I was figuring on the angle and stuff. And I was like, well, I gotta start somewhere. I gotta build something. So I might as well, this will be version one and we're gonna give it a whirl to see if it's comfortable enough to keep it this way. And the good thing about building your own is that you can adjust it, you can change it, you can redo it, you can fart around and make it right. Anyway, so this is our, this is version one. I'm pretty pleased with it, it's, it's quite comfortable. Um, I ended up using uh, stainless steel screws in order to, uh, in order to screw, secure my decking in. I've countersunk them so they're nice. They're sitting below the wood and uh, I've got the decking in. But again, it was, uh, it was sort of a chore to do it. But uh, if you guys are looking for investment advice, invest in stainless steel screws. They are not cheap. They are very expensive. They are 23 cents a piece. I did not know screws could be that expensive, but you know what? They were like a fine wine. You could like, the, that head of that screw bit, it fit in there quite tight. All right, so Dennis is here one last time because he has, He's designed the lid for this thing, and this is gonna be a slidey lid. That's beautiful, I have this first time I'm actually seeing it. So this thing slides to allow oxygen to get down into the air tube, and we've also got like a little bit of a collar sitting over here so it can go over the chimney. The chimney can just slide right in. And I was thinking of sort of a token of appreciation for, for Dennis, and I was thinking, you know what better? So welding is all about sticking things together. So there's a two part to this token of appreciation. <laughs> One is I've got maple syrup. It's the stickiest stuff I can think of. Oh, beautiful. So here's your maple syrup. And then- That's so fantastic. When you're dealing with welding, you're, he's, he's tried to blind me a couple times. So <laughs> what I, what I, the next part is, is this guy. This is oh possibly God. It's possibly the brightest flashlight known to man. This is the Olight Seeker 3 Pro, oh. and uh, it was sent to me to do a review on it, and it is crazy bright, and it's also uh, adjustable, so you can make it brighter, so you can increase your amperage. No. So, well, yeah, like it's got the little dial on it. See that little dial? See how bright that is? <laughs> I'm just getting you back. So anyways, here you go, Dennis. This is your very own Olight, Olight. Seeker 3 Pro. Oh my gosh. You can, you can enjoy, you can blind people with that much like you do probably all day, every day. So this is the other cool thing about it is that, look at, check a look at this charging system. Oh my gosh. That's pretty cool. So you just get it close and it, it just kind of, it hooks on and that's USB. Oh, USB port. There you go. That's fantastic. Enjoy. Oh my gosh, you know what, I'm gonna use this hunting for sure. Absolutely, that's what's, I think what they're for, for seeking. For seeking? Yeah, seeking, all right. That way I'm not gonna get lost in the bush. That's right. I can't think of a better time to give this thing its full test than on a, like a four layer day. That's what's kind of happened. It's uh, the skies have decided to, you know, open up and uh, the Arctic air has come in and it's minus 15 degrees and there's wind chill of like minus 21 at this point. My plan, <laughs> I love my plans. My plan was to have a hot tub today and that's what I'm gonna try to do. So I've got my my little uh, my two inch transfer pump here from Princess Auto. It's uh, it's capable of doing 9,480 gallons an hour. So that shouldn't take that long to fill this tub up because I think this tub is about 200 gallons. So my plan is to pull it out of the pond, put it into my tub, and fire up the heat in order to bring it up from probably around zero degrees Celsius up to. Uh, Actually, I know, it's weird. Canadians know water temperatures in Fahrenheit. I want it to about 103 Fahrenheit, optimal hot tub temperature. Anything above 90 Fahrenheit, I will be happy with. Especially today, I'm going to fire up the sauna as well for some place to kind of get dressed and undressed because that's, uh, it's cold. It's freaking cold today. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm concerned that the, uh, when I put the water to prime the pump, it's gonna freeze inside the whole thing. My plan was to get it further out in there, but that'll have to do. I actually made a hole over this way here and it's frozen. Priming water?
Well, that was something. The uh, the Princess Auto two inch transfer pump filled that tub in two and a half minutes. It's always pl fun playing with a fire hose. Eh, anyways, I can see the uh, crystals already forming on the surface of the tub. That water is uh, is very, 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 very cold. So uh, I gotta get some heat in there. The inaugural fire. Oh, I just gotta catch my breath after that. I was uh, wrestling a big pipe. So to light this bad boy, we're gonna take this lid off. This is the damper, essentially. We're gonna put a little bit of paper in the bottom of it. A little bit of paper. Right about there. And then we're gonna put some sticks. Now we're starting, we're cold starting this bad boy, so it's gonna need a lot of wood. So, fill her up. Got the old temperature probe set up here. The Napoleon temperature probe. I'm at uh, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. It's, uh, I don't know what that is in Celsius. Let's see. Does it get a button? Does it got a button? Two. It's two degrees Celsius right now. You can see that there's ice forming on the top of it as we speak. 33 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to see how long it takes to bring about 200 gallons of water up to hot tub temperature. You see the ice, see the ice. Okay, can you see that? Can you see the ice? The ice is forming on top. <laughs> this is, this is gonna be a great test of this. Still 35 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> this is, might be a, a little bit of a process. All right, well, I'm gonna keep stalking this fire, stoking the fire and uh, we'll check back in a couple minutes. All right, we're at uh, 67 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not terrible. I've just reloaded the stove again to uh, give it a little bit more wood because we want to get up to about 100 degrees. 67, still 67. Yeah, it's a slow go. You know what, it's kind of relaxing. Just stoking the fire, getting it all kind of warmed up. Something about wood heated water. Something relaxing about that. The wind would the wind would quit blowing. It'd be so much more enjoyable. Like it's the wind. It's not. It's not the fact that it's cold out. It's the wind. I can see the water has uh, risen. I guess the water expands as it gets warm. So I was just above the tub or just above the stove. Just above the stove before and now. I'm. It seems the water has grown. So uh, hopefully she doesn't get too high. Worst case scenario, it overflows, which is no no problem. We're outside. I was thinking of a way to get all the crud out, and I was like, I don't have a pool skimmer, but I got a screen, and this seems to make really short work of taking all the junk, leaves, pine needles, little bugs, anything that kind of accumulates in there. All right, we're currently at 94 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got the firebox just chocked full of wood, and um, I'm gonna think I'm about ready to go in. So what the plan now is to actually take the firebox door, this little slidey thing, and uh, pretty much dampen the fire down a little bit because I want to restrict the heat intake. So now I've got the temperature probe on this very far side seat. I'm not sure exactly what the temperature is on the other side because I know it's going to not be perfectly even across the tub. So I'm hoping this side isn't lava and we end up getting Kevin soup. So we're at 95 Fahrenheit. I got to get my swim trunks on. I'm going to scurry over here and uh, hope for the best. So cold. Oh, that's hot. Come on, boot. Oh, oh burn. Oh. Well, now we're talking. <laughs> That's nice. The top layer of water is extremely hot, the bottom not so much. I'm just doing like a doggy paddle right now in order to get the hot water down to the bottom. Oh, that's a little better. It's extremely hot over there. Maybe I push the cold water that way. Oh, 
Oh, it's definitely nice. Oh my, welcome to my hot tub. Oh, boiled Canadian. Oh, this is nice. It's so hot. I wonder how cold the wall is. You can't even see me, it's so steamy. So steamy. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> ah, success. Now you might think the water looks dirty. It's it's not. It's the, the all of the sawdust and stuff that was in the tub I couldn't quite get clean. So the cedar is kind of giving that tint to the water. It's uh it's actually like got the right side over here where the hot the firebox is burning. I can actually take the water and kind of scooch it this way. So it's like dual climate, dual climate, hot seat, cold seat, cold seat, hot seat. Kind of an abundance of caution. I ended up adding two little tabs of uh, spa treatment to this thing because uh, I'm not sure what's in this water. It's, it's pretty much, uh, it's really clean and uh, I just want to be safe, right? This is definitely the hot side. You can, you can definitely tell th the difference this side. Oh yeah. I guess you just don't quite appreciate how much effort goes into a project until you see the end results. Now this is pretty darn cool. I am sitting in the middle of the forest in my wood fired hot tub and it's about 101 degrees Fahrenheit. It's Kevin Soup. This is pretty cool. So what I've noticed now that I'm sitting here and testing out my tub and uh, there is definitely a hot seat which is on the other side and there is definitely a cold seat which is over here and I've got my temperature probe about uh, I don't know probably about six seven inches off the ground off the floor of the tub and I'm at 100 and 101 Fahrenheit can you see that can you see that probe 100 101 Fahrenheit and if I go let me see if I can actually do this while I I think it's going a little hotter than that on this. I'm um, 102. Why is it going up so quick? I'm going to cook myself. I'm going to cook myself. Uh, so if you put it close to the top, the probe goes higher. I guess that's uh, that's this thermal siphoning. So it's uh, kind of rotating. But we're losing, we're losing a lot of heat just because it's really darn cold out here. I'm pretty impressed. I am very satisfied with this project. It, uh, it turned out really, really well. What's really cool about this tub is you can kind of go right to the edge and you can kind of give yourself a little neck adjustment. Oh, it's definitely steamy. And it's got that aromatic cedar smell from the boards. It's kind of like, kind of like soup. We're in soup. Cedar soup. All right, guys, final update. I've been in here all afternoon. As it turns out, getting in a hot tub is easy. Getting out is another matter. So uh, that's what I got to do now. But I think I, I think I might just stay in here until I run out of wood. I don't know. It's uh, It seems to stabilize around 102, 103. As it turns out, 106 is bad. The uh, I had it at 106 and uh, you kind of it's it's a weird feeling you, your neck starts to get sore and uh it feels like you're gonna ha you have a little bit of a headache so uh yeah 106 is bad then i googled it and i was like uh hot tubs are not supposed to go past 104 so uh you mindful of that i had two buckets of uh water with ice on it so i dumped two buckets or 10 gallons worth of water in it and uh i dampened the fire completely down and it stabilized at 102 103 so right now i've got it dampened quite right down and uh, it's been like that for about 40 minutes at uh, 102, 103. So it is, it is stabilized, and we're we're good now. This is this is nice. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and uh, join me on the next one. I gotta get over there. Oh, I don't know if I can get over there. I think I'm just gonna live in the tub now. All right, it's go time. Uh, just do it like a mandate. Ah, that's cold. That's cold. Oh, there. <laughs> ah, I can't walk. Put boots back.